This is the MSI MAG 321 CU PDF, a 32 inch curved 4K gaming monitor that looks like it offers the full package 160Hz at 4K or 320Hz in the dual mode at 1080p. And for a surprisingly affordable price tag, in monitor world that is. Over the past few weeks or so, I've been using this as a display for work during the evening, playing some games, and even some boring stuff like writing scripts. And in this review, we're gonna go over what it does well, where it stumbles, and whether it's actually worth your hard-earned cash. With an MSRP of 499 pounds or 499 US dollars, this monitor faces stiff competition. In the UK, there's the 415 pound Alienware AW2725QF, a 27 inch IPS display that does 4K at 180Hz and 1080p at 360Hz. But because it's smaller, 1080p looks much sharper. Not to mention, there's the AOC Aegon Pro AG276QZD, a 27 inch 1440p OLED panel running at 240Hz. And there's also a QD OLED option at more or less the same price point. These two displays are arguably the best choice for pure gaming at this price point. Excellent motion clarity, perfect blacks, and rich contrast. Though, like with all OLEDs, there's that small risk of burning with static UI elements over time. So it's not that you can't do productivity on those displays, it's just something you need to be mindful of. That leaves this MSI monitor sitting in a unique spot. A large screen, high resolution, high enough refresh rate, and reasonably priced, plus you also get that dual mode option. It's clearly aiming to be your one monitor for everything kind of setup. Design wise, it's pretty simple. Matte black plastic all over, with a little bit of glossy on the rear here and there. No RGB and a clean, understated aesthetic. The 1500R curve of the display is rather subtle and something you kind of forget about after about five minutes of usage. Bezels are small and the only branding is the MSI logo on the chin. The stand uses MSI's penguin foot design, which is um, stable enough and relatively compact. It supports height and tilt adjustment, but there's no swivel whatsoever, which is just really weird and something I've just not seen on a monitor for a very long time. And it is a bit of a miss at this price. On the back, you've got two HDMI 2.1 ports, DisplayPort 1.4a and a 3.5mm headphone jack and USB-C with DisplayPort support and up to 15 watts of power delivery. That won't charge a laptop, but it's handy for quickly plugging and playing devices, like maybe charging your phone. And one last thing to note, this monitor has no built-in speakers. Personally, I always like having basic speakers in a monitor, even just for troubleshooting. So it's a small emission that might matter depending on your setup. Navigating the OSD or the on-screen display is extremely simple thanks to the joystick on the back of the display. Menus are laid out clearly and the UI is responsive and all of the usual features are here. Input switching, cheat crosshairs, refresh rate toggles, color profiles, and so on. Nothing groundbreaking, but nothing frustrating either. One thing I will add is that there is a separate power button on the right hand side of beneath the power logo. This caught me out for a while and it genuinely took me about five minutes to realize it was there. You don't use the joystick to turn the display on, that's just for shortcuts and menu navigation. Now, the most important part probably, the panel tech. This monitor uses a VA panel, which sits kind of below IPS and OLED when it comes to strengths and weaknesses. VA panels are great for contrast. You get deeper blacks, though not quite OLED level, and more depth in shadows with contrast ratios around 3000 to one. That makes darker scenes pop more than they would on an IPS, and things just kind of look a little bit better in the darker areas, but that's where the uh, kind of good things disappear. Motion clarity though is weaker. VA panels are prone to slower pixel transitions, especially in those darker shades, which can cause smearing or ghosting in fast paced games. Viewing angles are also narrower compared to an IPS or OLED. You'll notice color and brightness shift if you're not quite sitting in the direct head on position. By comparison, IPS just has better viewing angles, faster response times, and more consistent color reproduction. IPS panels are usually the go-to for creative work and color critical tasks and have been the go-to for gaming for many years. The trade-off is that blacks aren't as deep. You tend to get what's known as IPS glow on IPS panels that are quite bright. And OLED, of course, is in a league of its own right now, but they are more expensive, not as bright as some IPS panels and come with burn-in risk if you're doing a lot of static desktop work. I guess then the appeal of this monitor is its flexibility. If you want one display for both work and play, it ticks a lot of boxes. During the day, the 4K resolution gives you loads of usable space, but when it's time to game, 160 hertz is more than enough for a immersive single player title. And if you want that faster refresh rate for competitive stuff, there is the dual mode built in. Now, 
let's talk a little bit more about the dual mode, which is the big feature here. To enable it, you simply push the joystick on the back to the left and then to the right to enable it. It instantly switches between resolution and refresh rate preset. So if you've got it running at 4K 160, it'll flip to 1080p 320. It kind of saves you having to adjust things manually and is a pretty handy feature to have. Now, I personally haven't tested the Alienware AW2725QF I mentioned at the beginning of this video, but I've watched some reviews and the major thing that makes the Alienware a bigger recommendation is its use of integer scaling in its 1080p mode. So for one 1080p pixel, four native 4K pixels are activated. Whereas with this MSI model, I've seen no mention on the spec sheet or website but any different types of scaling used. As a result, when you activate dual mode, the UI and scaling gets a little bit confused sometimes, and also the 1080p mode is just kind of hideous to look at in the desktop. If you're sat at a desk and you're trying to use this for anything other than gaming, you don't wanna be doing that. Just leave it in 4K mode. Also, if you enable the dual mode, depending on the refresh rate you had it on, at 4K, that is the determining factor for what you get in 1080p. So let me run you through it. If we're set to 4K 160 Hz, then at 1080p with dual mode enabled, we can only choose between 320 or 60 Hz. But if you set the monitor to 4K 144 Hz, then enable dual mode, the 1080p defaults to 320 Hz, but you can adjust your refresh rate freely. I don't really know why that's a thing. I'll also add that you can't do this yourself manually within Windows. If you set your resolution to 1080p, you can't just go and then set your refresh rate to 320 Hz. You have to enable the dual mode feature to trick your PC into thinking it's got a different monitor connected, basically. MSI also lets you simulate smaller screen sizes. So if you're using the 1080p mode and full screen looks a bit soft and fuzzy, you can shrink it to a virtual 27 or even 24 inches to make it look a little bit sharper. It's 2025, so I guess I should also mention that there's also some AI-based tools baked into the firmware. Smart Crosshair adapts to the background. AI Vision boosts visibility in dark areas. And Optic Scope acts as a kind of software zoom. Honestly, they're all a bit gimmicky, but they're there if you want them. The MAG321 CU PDF supports a full range of variable refresh rate tech. AMD FreeSync Premium, NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility, and HDMI 2.1 VRR. On PC, that means smooth, tear-free gameplay, whether you're using an AMD or an NVIDIA graphics card. I did use this with an NVIDIA GPU, and G-Sync worked fine. One thing to note is that while it does support G-Sync, it's not officially certified by NVIDIA, so you may need to manually enable it in the control panel, but in practice, it worked well without issues. Also, you can enable HDMI CEC on this display. So if you enable it on your console and on the display, you can use your PS5 controller, for example, to wake up the monitor, which is a neat touch. Now let's talk quickly about response times. I use my OSRTT tool, and at 1080p 320Hz, the panel averages around 8.9 milliseconds in real-world transitions. That sounds high for such a fast refresh rate. And it is! Only about 17% of transitions actually fall within the 3.1 millisecond window, needed to truly match 320Hz. At 4K 160Hz, performance tightens up, around half of the transitions meet the 6.25 millisecond threshold, and overall, motion clarity is a little bit better. Of course, it's not going to match an OLED, but for a VA, it's not bad. I imagine that most people that will be using this will find it absolutely fine, because they're unlikely to be the most esports diehard gamer if you're going for something that's kind of a hybrid monitor. Color performance though is absolutely solid. You get full sRGB coverage, 94% of DCI-P3 and 88% Adobe RGB. Gamma sits at 2.2 and the white point is close to neutral. Uniformity is good too. At maximum brightness, the biggest luminance variation was around 7%, which is well within tolerance for a curved VA panel. HDR support is, uh, it, it's here. It's got support for it, it's certified for display HDR400, but that spec isn't really worth getting excited about, and I'm just not going to talk about it, because there's no local dimming, and peak brightness isn't high enough to create a meaningful HDR impact. So I'd personally just leave it disabled. Sorry. So, to conclude, the MSI MEG 321CU PDF is fine. It has no major flaws, but it also doesn't leave a strong impression. You've got decent colours, solid contrast, and a feature set that tries to be flexible. But a lot of it comes down to whether you specifically want a 32-inch curved screen at this price. Because when you drop to 1080p mode, it doesn't look good, especially at full screen, and especially if you sit pretty close to the display. You probably want to use the 24 or 27-inch virtual scaling mode to make it usable. At that point, you start asking, why not just get the Alienware? I mean, that offers better motion, IPS panel, 
1080p looks sharper, G-Sync, and just fewer compromises. The integer scaling at 1080p, plus the higher refresh rate as well, at both resolutions make that a much easier recommendation, especially when it's nearly £100 cheaper. Not to mention, OLED displays are absolutely obtainable at this price, so I think this display is for a very particular type of buyer. Someone who really wants that 32-inch size and a higher refresh rate 1080p experience all condensed into one display and doesn't have the room for maybe two monitors and you're willing to accept a few trade-offs just to get that bigger display at this price it's a bit of a difficult one but if you are the type of person looking for something as specific as this it's not a bad option it's fine Anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of the video. What do you think? Could you see yourself grabbing the MSI MEG 321CU PDF, or would you just grab the Alienware I've mentioned several times, or just a cheap OLED? If you'd like me to check out any other monitors, please leave your suggestions in the comment section down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and get subscribed if my face doesn't offend you. If you want to check out this display or any of the other products I've mentioned in this video, feel free to check that description down below for all of my affiliate links. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.